Can't get enough of the ranch life? Well, now you could fill in the gap in between videos with the Our Wyoming Life Perspective. It's our weekly podcast where you get a chance to sit down with Aaron and I and behind the scenes chat along with celebrity guests and a whole lot more. It's the Our Wyoming Life Perspective. You can find it wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Now, back to the ranch. Hi, I'm Mike, and today we dive into another two-part product review as we take a look at the Friesmeister and find out if it can save the ranch time and money. It's coming up today on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> Hi there, welcome back and thanks for joining us once again. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and follow along as we continue to explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Over every single winter here on the ranch, we have a constant fight, a battle that never seems to end and that's the battle that we have with water. When you have very few days during the winter that actually rise above freezing, it's hard to keep water open. Uh, last year and the year before, we actually dealt with uh, some experiments on how to keep stock tanks open, whether what type of heaters work, whether we could use bubblers and all that kind of stuff. And you can check out the link right above me here uh, to check out some of those videos. But today, we're not just talking about keeping tanks open. That's that's pretty much, uh, we've, we've kind of, we've kind of, well, actually to tell you the truth, we've kind of run that well dry. So what uh, we're going to do today is we're actually going to look at ways to keep hydrants open. Uh, one of the things that we constantly have to deal with, obviously, is the freezing of the ice, but also the freezing of the hydrants and overflowing of stock tanks. It's a constant reminder that uh, we have trouble with doing all of this and trying to keep it all uh, maintained and managed around the ranch. But it wouldn't it be nice if we could basically run stock tanks during the winter time like we do in the summer. In the summertime, we put a float on a tank, we turn on the hydrant and boom, we're done. We know that that tank is gonna be full whenever the cows come in and drink or calves or pigs or chickens or whoever it may be. But unfortunately, winter time on the ranch means a whole different game for stock tanks. We can't leave hydrants running. These things will freeze up. Uh, they will overflow stock tanks. We'll end up with ice skating rinks out here. So basically I've showed you some of this stuff in the past, but uh, we use pool noodles in order to get water from the hydrant down to the stock tank, very simple. But one of the biggest tricks is that you have to remember to come out and shut it off. That means you're setting timers, all that kind of good stuff. One thing I do utilize, and, and these are very handy, is I make little tags for each stock tank or each hydrant that I have around the ranch. I'm able to, when I turn this on, I can take this tag with me, and hopefully that reminds me to come back and turn it off at some point. Not all the time, but it, it works maybe seven out of 10 times. So you can put this on your wrist, you can throw it in the gator, whatever you're gonna do, and then that reminds me to come back and, and turn this off. But what if we didn't need all this? What if we could just put a float on here in the winter time? Well, there's a brand new tool out there that might just allow us to do that. Let's head back over to the shop for a second. Hey, That's where the freeze miser comes in. That is these little guys. Now I have to make this very clear that this is not a sponsored video. They have not paid us in any way to endorse their product. We are testing this purely on our own because if this does work, this could be a huge game changer uh, for winter water. And I'm hoping that it does. These we actually purchased from our local feed store. Uh, they're $31 a piece. I don't know if they're cheaper anywhere else. I don't know what the uh, manufactured suggested retail price is, but I know that they cost me $31 a piece. So let's take a look at this thing and see exactly what it does. So basically this is it. It's called the freeze miser. And what it has is a very small opening here at this end. Uh, what happens is as the temperature falls, and it says anywhere below 37 degrees, a small valve opens inside this and allows the dripping of water to start to happen. And what that does is keep anything in that water line from freezing. Now I've got a handy dandy little uh, booklet that I picked up from Thars as well, our local feed store, that shows what this thing looks like on the inside. Let me show you this brochure here. 
So basically, what it what what it says is you can just put this on the on the hydrant or wherever you're going to put it, and this little spring moves back and forth based on the the temperature. Um, you can. Uh, run it up to a hose of 150 feet and maybe even longer actually if you keep that hose up off the ground. But what we're going to be doing is testing it in a couple different applications today. One place we're going to be testing it is on a, on a hydrant and a float right down there at that cow tank that we were hanging out before. We're going to put a brand new float on that thing. I think I've got a brand new float somewhere around here. If not, then we'll recycle an old float. But uh, we're going to put that on. We're going to do it exactly like the directions say that we're supposed to do it. And we're going to turn everything on and see, what's ha see what happens. Today, uh, we're looking for a high right around 30 degrees. It's a beautiful day outside. There's not much wind. Tonight, we're down to 20. And then we're down in the teens for a couple nights. So my plan here is is to get all this stuff installed today, uh, show you guys the, the, the concept behind it and the installation. And then on Monday, we'll come back with a brand new video and we'll see how it worked and see if anything froze up, if any hydrants broke, which would be very bad. Uh, but uh, we will, uh, we'll see how the whole thing works and, and how, it all, how it all works out. So first we need to find ourselves a float and uh, get something hooked up down there. The other, the other application we're gonna try it with is actually just with a hose. Um, I'm just gonna hook a hose up to a hydrant and we're gonna let that hose lay there in the, in the snow. We're gonna hook this thing up to the end of the hose and turn that hose on. And we'll see if this thing is able to keep that hose from freezing. That will pretty much uh, give us a proof of concept. And if this works, this could save the ranch, uh, not only money, because obviously water and pump time and everything else going on uh, with the water, it, that's money, that costs money. But also a lot of time, because I spend a lot of time running around, making sure tanks are full and, and, and filling them up and shutting them off and all that kind of good stuff. With this thing, all you have to do is just do a visual inspection of each tank and make sure that it's full. Uh, you'll also see on those tanks that we have um, heaters in those tanks as well. Well, that's what keeps the tank thawed. I think that's pretty much uh, essential to this. You can't have frozen water. Uh, I think that would start to creep up the line. I'm not sure, but uh, it's something that we want to avoid. So we're definitely going to make sure that we have uh, heated water in all the tanks uh, where we use these as well. So found a float. And what we're going to do is some quick assembly here in the shop just to make things a little bit easier. But um, we're going to assemble the entire float assembly the way it's supposed to be, according to the, uh, the website and the manual. So we start out with a float, not brand new. This is a used one, but it still should work. And then what we're gonna do on this float is we're actually gonna put a Y. Why? Well, I'll show you. This Y is essential to making sure everything works. So that's pretty dang tight. Both of our ends of the Y are open. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our freeze miser and attach it, hand tighten it, right there, okay? So now I can put my bracket back on. And this is the hanger that you use to attach it to the stock tank. So we've got that all set up. Uh, one of the big things that the book does talk about is that you have to have the freeze miser is either pointing down or horizontal, and that's so that you have gravity to help drip this out, obviously, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so you can't have it facing up or else it's obviously not gonna work. So we're gonna grab a hose really quick and get it hooked up onto here and then ready to go into our hydrant and then we'll head out to that tank. Now, in a normal situation, I would have a lot shorter hose because I don't have that far to go to the hydrant, but this is what I've got handy, so we'll work with this. And if it works, I'll probably end up replacing the hose with something a lot shorter. There we go. We're ready to go from... Actually, this hose may work pretty good. I'll show you why. Okay, let's head out there. Okay, so here we are right back out at our, our main cow stock tank. We're gonna hook this float up and hopefully be able to see exactly how this thing works. I don't know if it's cold enough. Uh, they did say, you know, that anytime below 37 degrees, it will start dripping right away. So I think that's actually gonna work to our advantage. Um, the reason I said that a, a longer hose might actually be a good thing on this because this tank is not exactly level. This portion of the tank is actually sitting a little bit lower and I was kind of thinking maybe the hose could come around. <laughs> And that way I've got the hydrant set up, or not the hydrant, but the float set up on the lowest part of the tank. So I'm at less risk for uh, um, overflowing. Okay, and if you notice this thing, um, as it drips, it's gonna drip right back into the tank, which is a good thing. 
uh, it won't create a an ice skating rink or any type of place where a cow can slip on the uh, on the ice. I'm gonna run this temporary hose around. Try to get it kind of up as much as possible out of the cow's way where they're not gonna get tangled up in it. And then hook it up. So if this works, um, you know, it doesn't seem like it's that much to get excited about, but if this actually works, we could, we could actually plumb tanks in using these little things um, and be able to keep uh, everything working smooth all winter long. All right, we turn on our water. All right, we have running water, which we knew we would have, which is not that big of a deal, but we'll come back over and we'll check this in just a little bit and see what exactly is happening with the, uh, the freeze miser. In the meantime, let's go check out our next application for this thing. All right, so we have about 50 feet of hose here. And I've now drugged through the snow. And hopefully it's not frozen itself. First off, I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up and make sure that there's no snow or ice in this hose to start with and that we're free flowing. Where's the other end? Oh, there it is. Come on, water. Hey, there we go. We got water. Okay, so we know the hose is open. That's the first part. Then just like we did on the float, we're gonna start out with a Y. Why? Because the instructions tell us to, that's why. Okay. On goes the Y. On one side of the Y, we're gonna put on our freeze miser. And on the other side, just so we can test it, I'm actually gonna put on a spray nozzle to make sure everything works. So we're gonna turn this back on. Well, the spray nozzle's broken, but we have water anyway. We have a leak of some sort, maybe. Yeah, we're leaking from somewhere. This hose end got smushed a little bit and run over. So we're gonna fix this really fast. Fixing hoses is something that I've actually gotten pretty good at. But gone are the days of having to use hose clamps and all that kind of goofy crap. Now, I've actually found a much better way to do this. This is pretty much ruined. So I'm just gonna cut this out using my X-Acto knife or whatever this thing is called, box knife, into the garbage it goes. And here, we've actually got these little deals. These you can pick up at Home Depot or wherever. Um, they're much simpler than using the hose clamps, that's for sure. So all you have to do is just push, you take it apart, you take this end, put it down, this end goes on the hose, smoosh it on there, and then you just tighten it up. And really, you just give it a couple good twists, and we should be good to go with no leaks. We'll see. Now oh, we got water. Turn that off. Okay, so now we have our, our uh, what is it called again? Freeze miser on this end and our nozzle on this end to be able to test. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna kind of wrap this hose up just a little bit. It's not that long, it's, it's maybe a 100 foot hose, maybe. Um, but I am gonna wrap it up because like I said before, I wanna make sure that I keep this part facing down. So I'm gonna just hang it over something around here. Okay, and as you can see, 
right here, the hose miser is actually already doing its thing. I was wrong. I thought the water came out of here. It looks like it's actually coming out from the bottom. But that's a good thing. Of course, it's going to drip water. So it will create a, a slippery area over here. That is a lot of water to lose. I wish that was going into a stock tank or something. But for the purpose of our testing, I guess that'll work. Let's head down to the stock tank that we just set up and see if it's doing the same thing. And uh, if it is, then we know that one's working too. While the stock tank is filling up, it's definitely not uh, coming out of the uh, the freeze meister, the freeze meister, the freeze miser as the other one. But I kind of think that may be because all the water is actually heading into the uh, the float. So if I shut off the float side, which I'm not sure if I'll be able to do. i get my fingers in there. If I shut off the float side and send the water just to this side, I kind of wonder if this one will start running out also. Okay, so that's weird. This one's not doing its leaking thing. So I'm gonna take it off. Make sure we do have water here. Yep, and then what I'm gonna do is replace it with a different one. I had three of these. Okay. Well, that one's not doing it either. So what I'm guessing is that being out here in the sun, maybe it's just, uh, keeping it hot enough maybe I don't know come out and check it later but I'll turn the float back on get everybody back up and moving and the water filling up here so that's the basic gist of how these things work like I said if they work that well they may actually be a game changer it would be uh, it would be interesting to see if this is something that we can utilize on the ranch here uh, to keep water open in the winter time and how many different ways we can utilize it whether it's coming from wells or uh, uh, cisterns or that kind of stuff might be very interesting so come back on monday we will have an uh we'll finish this up we'll see how these things work uh we will have that video monday afternoon then our last video of the year is coming up on wednesday the 23rd that'll be our year end wrap up we'll take a look at how the ranch has changed over the last year and and how you guys have helped to do so. So it's all coming up. We'll see you next time right here on our Wyoming Life.